This was easily my biggest flying challenge so far. Can you see his head? Yep. Driving fast, Altitude. full power. Too tight. Good. Today's adventure starts at Somerset, New Jersey, and we are flying to Bolton Field in Ohio, just west of Columbus, to join my first Cherokee to Osh formation flying clinic in preparation for a mass arrival at Oshkosh. It will be my first time getting a more serious training about formation flying. 16 pilots, two days, one goal. Get everyone ready for a formation arrival into the biggest aviation event in the world. I was in the last one and I was just terrified. <laughs> can I make it to solo in the first day? And can I make my wife comfortable with flying this close to other planes? I'm Bruno, a private pilot based in New York, sharing my flying adventures around the country. Flying your own plane can open doors to incredible places, sights and stories. And I take every flight as a unique learning experience. With safety at the center of every plan and decision, aviation has become my lifestyle and a journey that I share to this channel, one flight at a time. Subscribe and activate notifications not to miss the next adventures. This is Fly with Bruno. And a low wing, half mile southwest of Fishcrack, your wing. Last year was my second year at Oshkosh, and the first time I got to fly the Fisk arrival into the world's busiest airport. Lowing in the base turn, just keep that turn coming all the way around one turn. You can actually aim towards, directly towards that pink dot, clear to land at or after the pink dot. For anyone associated with aviation, Oshkosh is easily the best week of the year. Over 30,000 planes fly in for seven days of camping, partying, amazing air shows, and good times with people from all over the world who have one thing in common, a deep passion for anything with wings. While still buzzing from landing on the orange dot and checking out that item from my bucket list, I learned about the mass arrivals, in which groups of pilots with similar aircraft fly to and land in formation at Oshkosh in what over the years became one of the Air Ventures attractions. That's how I came across Cherokees to Wash a group of Piper pilots who have been flying to Oshkosh together since 2010. The group grows every year, and since the very beginning, they welcome grooming pilots, like myself. So this year, I decided to join them. And after signing up and watching a series of mandatory safety videos, I had one more requirement to fulfill. Attend one of their so-called mini-clinics, in which registered pilots get to learn and practice the basics of formation flying in preparation for the mass arrival. These mini clinics are scheduled on select weekends between January and June all over the United States as the group has pilots from all over the country. Each clinic has a host, a group member that volunteers their time to organize the event. After missing the first two clinics on the East Coast because of weather, I had one last chance. A mini clinic at Bolton Field, Ohio, hosted by Andrew and his wife Sam two lovely people that I'll finally get to meet that weekend. Because of the headwinds flying westbound, Bolton Field was a three and a half hour flight from my home airport in New Jersey. So it was around 8 a.m. on a Friday that we set off to what would be the start of an amazing weekend. Somerset traffic, Grumman is taking runway 30, straight out departure to the west, Somerset. New York, good morning, Roman 9984, uniform. Roman calling, what's your position? Roman is uh, six miles northwest of Sober VOR, 5300, climbing 6500, looking for flight following to Tango Zulu Romeo, direct. Roman 84, uniform, Roger, contact Allentown approach, 124.45. 124.45, it's wearing from today. Our flight to Bolton Field went pretty much uneventful for the first two hours, but things changed a bit when I saw some weather developing the Pittsburgh area directly in front. I deviated to the south where things appeared to be clearer, with visible gaps in between cells to cross to the other side. But if that wasn't the case, I would land and simply wait it out, since I had fuel and time to spare. The weather data provided by ADSB gave me a good picture of how things were looking in front of us, until it didn't. Near Johnstown, the weather data vanished from both my iPad and my multifunction display, which prompted me to think I had an issue with my system. And that's when I realized I wasn't the only one. 
Clarksburg, been able to report on Hotel Romeo. I just lost my Disney a few miles back, and I was wondering if anyone else is uh, complaining about that. Roman 8 for your info. I also lost my DSB weather, so I'm experiencing the same problem. Might be something in the area. Just wanted to let you know. Cherokee 285 in Hotel. I also lost my DSB weather. ATC was great at giving me and other pilots vectors around the weather. At 4,500 feet, I was even getting intermittent cell phone signal with real-time weather data that added to the situational awareness. Terminate for uniform. You might get a vector about five degrees west, keep you about two miles south. Uh, I'll keep watching you. For the next 40 miles, you appear to be in clear air, though. I appreciate that, and uh, we'll be here at 5 from. After going about 60 miles off course and dodging a few cells, we we're finally back on track to our destination. Our A4 uniform, Roger, and uh, as you continue uh, westbound, once you get uh, maybe a two zero miles along your route of flight, you should be uh, mostly clear of uh, most of the uh, precipitation. I appreciate that, A4. Number A4 uniform, the airport's 12 o'clock, 7 miles, registered, terminated, Squawk VFR, contact tower 128.1. Squawk VFR, contact tower 128.1, A4 from today. 9984 uniform, both tower four day two mile left base, runway two two, clear to land. So we made it to Bolton Field, Ohio. Uh, now we're gonna meet everybody inside. A lot of other planes here already, but apparently there's more people coming. And uh, we'll get this party started uh, today at 3 p.m. We have our first ground briefing that will go over everything that will happen throughout the weekend and how the flights are going to unfold. We're going to be divided into elements and wingmans and leads and all of that stuff. So we're excited for that. And uh, yeah, so looking forward to kicking this off. Our longer than planned flight due to weather left us with little time between our arrival and the beginning of Friday's Cherokee to Wash activities. But we were able to take a few minutes to wind down and enjoy a sandwich at the famous diner at Bolton Field. JP's Barbecue Ribs. This diner actually catered for the entire group the next day, which was really nice. And the barbecue is delicious, so I highly recommend the stop if you're in the Columbus area. After grabbing some food and putting away our luggage at the FBO, we jumped straight into the first briefing of the weekend, led by Cherokee's to Wash Director of Air Operations, Ed. On this first day, the plan was for first comers like me to ride right seat with one of the more experienced pilots, so we could gain comfort in flying close to another aircraft. This is the very first step into formation flying and isn't as easy as it sounds, as our natural instinct as pilots is to fly away from other planes, not close to them. This afternoon I would fly with Dennis, a fellow Grumman driver with a beautiful tiger and a longtime member of the group. Our lead aircraft would be Ronnie, another Grumman owner with an unmistakable yellow cheetah, same motto as 8-4 uniform. We would take off and fly a modified 7 mile extended pattern with bright turns and then land back at the field. This time, I decided to keep my cameras down for most of the flight so I could focus on the real task, watch and learn. Just came back from this demo flight, which is really, really cool. I wanted to really pay attention to what was happening. You know, that was a demo flight for me. Now we're gonna do a briefing of everything that's gonna happen tomorrow. Tomorrow's a big day. We're gonna do three or four flights. That's the, uh, you know, the opportunities that we had to um, practice, really. It gets really close. Obviously, it's not tight formation, but it's the principles of it. It's a great start to the weekend. Can't wait for tomorrow. After wrapping up the briefing, the group headed over to dinner and drinks. Our hosts put so much thought and effort into creating a memorable weekend for this group. And to me, this was the first opportunity to hang out and get to know the other pilots. Good times with good people. The perfect ending to a great first day. Saturday greeted us with rain and low IFR conditions in the morning, but it didn't stop the group from showing up on time for what would be the start of a busy day of flight training. The forecast had VFR weather starting in a few hours, and we wanted to be ready to fly as soon as conditions improved. 
So our first task of the morning was to go out to the planes for an early pre-flight and to have it fully ready for go time. We had a total of 16 pilots for this clinic, and Ed divided us into groups of three, called elements. Each element has a lead aircraft plus one or two wingmen. Elements are named Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, etc., and each aircraft in the element gets a number designation, Alpha 1, Alpha 2, Alpha 3, Bravo 1, and so on. That becomes your call sign for the flight, for which we use a non-active frequency. For the first flight of the day, I would be PIC with Ronnie in the right seat. Our call sign was Echo 2, and we would be the last aircraft all the way in the back. Our check-in time would be 10.15 am. By that time, you need to be on your aircraft, engine on, radio set, and ready to taxi. Precisely at 10.15, the lead aircraft for the entire flight, or Alpha 1, checks in with the group. Key flight, check in. Alpha 2. Alpha 3. Bravo 1. Bravo 2. Bravo 3. Charlie 1. Charlie 2. Alpha 1. Delta 2. Delta 3. Echo 1. Echo 2. This flight will be similar to the one we did the day before. A box pattern with 7 mile legs and right turns. As Bolton Field is a towered airport, all of our flights were coordinated with the tower ahead of time. Every part of the formation flight is choreographed and based on teamwork. All aircraft taxi on alternate sides of the taxiway towards the runway. The lead aircraft purposes the stabulator to signal that it's moving to the center line and the signal is passed all the way to the back. All aircraft then move to the cold side of the taxiway, opposite to the runway, and turn 45 degrees for the run-up. We don't let wings overlap, so if someone has an issue and gets stuck, aircraft can still taxi around them. Once the last aircraft is done with the run-up, they will give a thumbs up to the next aircraft, and that signal is passed all the way to the flight lead, who then proceeds to request takeoff clearance. After the run-up is complete, the aircraft take to the runway in a single file and assume their position. Element leads on the center line and wingmen on the sides. Once the last aircraft is in position, they make a call. Cherokee, take away. The flight lead then starts their takeoff roll, with each wingman following after 5 seconds. Each flight element will repeat the same procedure, with 30 second intervals between elements. Once clear of obstacles, flight leads will establish a 300 foot per minute climb and 95 knots, allowing wingmen to catch up. My first challenge was to stay in position alongside my lead. As a wingman, you're looking to stay slightly below them, about one wingspan apart, on a 30 to 45 degree angle behind. A visual clue that you're in the right position is when you see their main wheel fairing touch the nose wheel fairing and their wing passing right through their spinner. Ideally, that's the side picture you want to maintain throughout the entire flight. But I did struggle at first. It took me a while to process the minimal but constant throttle changes necessary to overcome the turbulence and stay in position. It's also very easy to over control the plane, resulting in falling behind or getting too close. And doing turns adds to the challenge. Differently from the day before, we would be flying a left pattern today, which meant I would be on the inside of the lead during turns. There's a natural discomfort that comes with seeing the other aircraft turn right into you. When you're in the inside of the turn, you're flying a shorter distance compared to the lead, which means you need to slow down not to overshoot them. Your bank angle will also be different, a little steeper than theirs. On this first turn, my reactions were slow and I got too close and had to evade down to avoid being in a dangerous position. As you see here, the lead lost sight of me, which is something you don't want to happen. Ronnie was calm and patient to point out my mistakes and prepare me for the second turn, in which I felt a bit more comfortable. On the long downwind leg, we practiced yet another maneuver, the side swap. During the actual mass arrival at Oshkosh, the group flies information for about 45 minutes before landing, and switching sides is a way to give wingmen a chance to relax their necks and look to the opposite side. That's because you never take your eyes off the lead aircraft. In fact, we avoid changing frequencies or switching tanks during these flights, unless there is a qualified pilot in the right seat to do it. 
The cue to swap sides is given by the lead. They purpose their stabulator and rock their wings three times in sequence, prompting wingman to pull the throttle and fall back about 500 feet. We then cross control to slide to the opposite side and then move back into position. On my first try, I fell back way more than I should, again as a result of over controlling. Everything feels new during your first flight. I was all over the place. But slowly, I felt I was getting the gist of it. Although I was probably a bit further away than I should, the next couple of turns felt a bit better and I felt like I was maintaining the right side picture. Then came the landing procedure. The flight lead established the group on a long 7 mile final and this is when all aircraft need to get in a single file position. The element leads will again purpose their stabulators and rock their wings to signal the transition and wingmen fall back 500 feet and get behind them. You don't want to fall back too much since that will affect the other planes behind you. A good visual cue for maintaining the 500 feet separation is when your thumb just about covers the aircraft in front. Simple but effective. The group maintains 85 knots on final and aim for the 1,000 footers on the hot side of the runway, meaning the opposite side of where we were exit. After touchdown, you want to quickly cross to the cold side, clearing the way for aircraft behind you. In the Grumman, crossing the numbers at 85 means you're carrying way too much speed and you certainly float, so that added an extra challenge to this final part of the flight. I gotta say, I wasn't too happy with my performance on this first flight, but I did understand what I did wrong and knew how to fix it, which would be my main focus for the next flight. Every flight is followed by a thorough brief in which we analyze what each of us did right, wrong, and how we can improve. On the second flight of the day, I would fly with John, another Grumman pilot and longtime member of the group. I was hyper-focused on maintaining the correct side picture this time, and I felt more confident from the very beginning. Despite being the last plane all the way in the back once again, it would be an element of three this time, and I had a fellow wingman, Matt, also flying a Grumman Cheetah. Overall, I was feeling more relaxed and concentrated, which improved my performance significantly compared to the first flight. Keep your power until you get there. You'll slow quick enough. Good. Can you see his head? Yep. Driving fast, Altitude. full power. Too tight. Good. Put it back in. This is probably the moment where it clicked to me, and I was starting to get the side picture right. Wheel ferries touching, wing through the spinner, not too close, and not too far. Pull your power back a little bit. That's the turn. Instead of a simple traffic pattern, this flight was more complex with a series of turns left and right. Throughout the entire flight, I kept better control of my position and I also felt more comfortable in the plane. As opposed to the first flight, when I felt a bit stressed, now I was having fun. Again, to go up, get some practice on the turns, and then let you experience the downwind arrival. Um, start up and check in was good. Got out there, um, turned out, did some turns and stuff coming back. Good job. Usually, unless you're at the very end, a bunch of lights behind you. 
So if you don't like what's going on in front of you and you feel that it's a safety of life thing for you, what's the rule? You're at right altitude, it's break out, and if we're, it's in the landing deal, you're on the go, okay? Um, After our debrief, we're off to our third flight of the day. Same route, same practice, same right seater. But this time, I'll have an extra passenger. Since my wife Juliana will be in the right seat for the actual mass arrival at Oshkosh, I wanted her to experience formation flying and being close to another plane in the air, so she could get comfortable like I did. But comfortable doesn't quite describe how she felt. I was probably doing a good job with my flying, as John kept quiet and relaxed for the entire flight. But we were both unaware that, in the back seat, my wife was very nervous. I genuinely thought she would enjoy the adrenaline and the visuals, but being this close to another aircraft while getting tossed around in turbulence isn't quite the experience for someone who's not in control, especially if they're not pilots. I immediately knew that getting her comfortable with this kind of flying would be key in flying the actual mass arrival yet another challenge on this road to Oshkosh. But before then, I still had one more big test to pass. My first solo formation flight. Time for the last flight of the day. And guess what? I'm going solo this time. By myself. Let's see how this goes. After the last flight, John, Anne and Ronnie gave me the green light to go solo. It's a big deal. Hours before, during that first flight in the morning, I didn't feel prepared at all. But after focusing on the right things, my learning curve was quick. And now, here I was. Off to my first solo formation flight. To make it even more memorable, we would fly as an element of three Grumman Cheetahs, with John as the lead and Matt and I on his wing. We flew the same route all over again. And despite being alone in the cockpit for the first time that weekend, everything else felt pretty much the same. It was a really special flight. That's it, back from my fourth and final flight of the day, and I passed <laughs> my first solo in flying information, and uh, it was so, so awesome, awesome. In aviation, we learn things, new things every day in every flight, but this really felt special because it, it felt really nice to come out here to Ohio and learn this new skill and, and see how much fun it is. It is intense, it is amazing, uh, you know, but it's also really, really fun. And now I can't wait for the actual mass arrival at Oshkosh, because on top of all the fun that we had here, you end the adventure at the start of the biggest aviation event of the year. Awesome day, awesome flight, awesome experience. I'll never forget this. And I know the adventure is just beginning. After the training on Saturday, Sunday was more of a relaxing day. Some would depart early back to their homes. Others would stick around for some more formation flying. It was early in the morning with calm winds and smooth air. And despite having to fly 400 miles back home, I felt this was a great opportunity to have Juliana perhaps get more comfortable with this type of flying. So I joined the group for one last flight. This time, instead of being a mere passenger, I would walk her through each phase of the flight and engage her in focusing on the side picture so she could help me get it right. Bringing her into the mindset completely changed her experience and it helped her feel much better throughout the flight. Key flight, check in. Alpha 2, Alpha 3, Bravo 1, Bravo 2, Bravo 3, Charlie 1, Charlie 2, Charlie 3, Delta 1, Delta 2, Delta 3, Echo 1, Echo 2. Excellent work, flight. Juliana is a professional photographer and filmmaker, and the fact that she felt comfortable to be in her element during that flight was a sign that my strategy made a difference.
She handled it far better than the day before and shows that creating the right atmosphere for the passenger is just as important as mastering the skills I learned on that weekend. This was such an amazing weekend and not only for the flying, I mean the people. For me, it's always the people and aside from the flying portion of this weekend, just hanging out with everybody, having a meal, having a beer, and having conversations, you learn so much, but most importantly, you meet people that will become a part of your life. I'm really glad I met everybody that I met this weekend. I'm looking forward to seeing them all at Oshkosh. It will make the experience even better. They are doing one last flight this morning. I decided to sit it out. Got enough flying for the weekend and I still have the long fly back home ahead from Ohio back to New Jersey, Somerset. Can't wait to be back home again, but the memories and the amazing experiences I got here and the, you know, the sign off for the mass arrival are certainly, were certainly the highlights. I, uh, I'll never forget this. And uh, you know, now it's the road to Oshkosh. Really excited about all of this, but now let's fly home. Uniform, Bolton Tower, runway 22, clear for takeoff. Left turn eastbound approved. Watch for Bonanza traffic inbound from the southeast for the left downwind. Clear for takeoff, runway 22, we'll be watching the traffic. While surfing the tailwinds at 9,500 feet in smooth air, I couldn't help but reflect on the amazing experiences General Aviation has provided me so far and the countless amount of people and friends that came into my life thanks to aviation. In less than a month, me and the rest of this group will be heading to Charlie Whiskey Alpha, Central Wisconsin Airport, to join the entire Cherokee to Wash group in what will be the final preparation for our mass arrival. We'll be over 60 pilots this year, and 10 a.m. on Saturday is when Oshkosh Tower will close one of their runways for our arrival. That story will be part two of this Road to Oshkosh series, which we'll get to follow not only here on YouTube, but also on my Instagram page with real-time posts and stories. So be sure to follow me there too. Registrations for Cherokees to Wash are closed for this year, but I highly encourage you to learn more about them and join us next year. I put a link down in the description to their website. Until part two, I wish you safe flying, blue skies, and tailwinds. And if you're coming to Oshkosh, I'll definitely see you there. I can't wait.